Good afternoon. Uh, I'm was, I'm hoping to start um, with uh, our friend uh, Filippo Grandi, who just briefed uh, the Security Council uh, during its um, annual session uh, dedicated to the work of UNHCR. I know, Filippo, are you connected? Let's see if we can get him on. We love technology. Yeah? He's, he's still talking? OK, great. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll go to Filippo uh, once, um, once we're done here. Um, the 2020 peacekeeping ministerial uh, started today in Seoul. As you know, it is sort of hybrid. In a pre-recorded video message, the Secretary General said the past seven years have been an, seen a notable increase in support to strengthen UN peacekeeping. He said we have been able to deploy new military and police capabilities more quickly and to include more women peacekeepers, police and civilians in our operations. However, the Secretary General added, as conflicts grow more complex and prolonged, peacekeeping has never been more relevant and its success more urgent. But he said we still face significant gaps in our missions. Mr. Guterres welcomed the key themes of discussions uh, for the uh, meeting, which is organized by the Republic of Korea, um, including medical uh, capacity building technology and increasing the number of role of women peacekeepers. He urged member states to redouble their support for UN peacekeeping to succeed. Uh, that message was shared with you. Uh, he also spoke by video message to the opening of the 16th Internet Governance Forum, which is taking place in Katowice in Poland. He said that digital technology has saved lives by enabling millions of people to work, study and socialize safely online. However, the pandemic has also magnified the digital divide and the dark side of technology. The lightning fast spread of misinformation, the manipulation of people's behavior and more. The Secretary General underscored that the only way to address these challenges is with strengthened cooperation by establishing clear rules to safeguard human rights and fundamental freedoms, by regaining control over our data and by countering disinformation and hate speech and by connecting everyone to the internet by 2030. His message is online. And the Secretary General also spoke by pre-recorded video message to the inaugural Global Forum on Children and Youth, which is being virtually convened by UNICEF. He said that with conflicts, climate change and hunger, inequalities and COVID-19 taking their toll on children, now is the time to reignite hope. The Secretary General called for solidarity and action to reset our world for children and young people. He also uh, spoke by recorded by video message to the Nutrition for Growth Summit being held in Tokyo. The Secretary General noted that hunger is still on the rise, with nearly one in ten people in the world being severely food insecure due to conflict, climate disruption, and poverty. He voiced the hope that Nutrition for Growth Summit will push for better nutrition policies and programs and attract new commitments to strengthen food systems. Both those messages are online. And on Ethiopia, the um, Secretary General Special Representative on Children, oh, excuse me, on Sexual Violence in Conflict, Pramila Patton, urging, is urging the government of Ethiopia to promptly sign into agreement with the United Nations to prevent and respond to conflict-related sexual violence. Ms. Patton noted that the extreme brutality and sexual violence has been the hallmark of the conflict in Tigray. She expressed deep concern over the continuing reports of targeted attacks against women, girls, boys, and men in Tigray, Afar, and Amhara. This includes the systematic use of sexual violence as a weapon of war, a form of retaliation, punishment, humil humiliation, and stigmatizing people based on their real or perceived ethnic identity. She reiterated her urgent call to all parties to the conflict to immediately cease every form of sexual violence and end hostilities to pave the way for an inclusive gender response ceasefire and peace building efforts. And from South Sudan, the humanitarian coordinator, Matthew Hollingsworth, has strongly condemned the violence in Lear, in Unity uh, State. 
Clashes have resulted in many civilians being killed or injured, and aid supplies were also looted. Mr. Hollingsworth called on the authorities to make every effort to protect communities as well as aid workers and supplies across the country. During clashes that lasted for several days last week, a humanitarian worker employed by a non-governmental organization focusing on nutrition was killed during the violence. Our humanitarian colleagues tell us that the number of violent incidents carried out by young men across South Sudan has increased since March of this year. Mr. Hollingsworth said the violence has no place in a country determined to move forward on a path to peace. A um, couple of climate-related uh, and environmental-related uh, issues. The UN Environment Program today announced this year's Champions of the Earth. The award is given to people that inspire, defend, mobilize, and act to tackle the greatest environmental challenges of our times, including protecting ecosystems and restoring them. This year, the winners include Prime Minister Mia Motley of Barbados, the Sea Women of Melanesia, Melanesia, who train local women to monitor and assess the impacts of widespread coral bleaching, Dr. Gladys Kalema uh, Zikuzoka, who was the first ever wildlife veterinarian of the veterinar veterinarian, I cannot pronounce that word, the doctor that treats animals, of the Uganda Wildlife Authority, and Maria uh, Koleskonov, oh, it's not a good day today, uh, Kolesk Kolesnikova, Maria Kolesnikova of the Kyrgyz Republic, an environmental activist, youth advocate, and head of Move Green, an organization working to monitor and improve air quality in the Asia region. We congratulate all of these very worthy winners. And a new report that caught our eye today from the FAO, uh, having to do with the earth, says that the land we use to grow food is contaminated with large quantities of plastic pollution. Asia is estimated to be the largest user of plastics in agricultural production. FAO says that while most scientific research on plastics pollution has been directed at aquatic ecosystems, especially oceans, experts found that agricultural soils are thought to receive far greater quantities of microplastic. The agency calls for further research into this matter. Today is the International Day of Civil Aviation. In his message, the Secretary General says the pandemic continues to put deep stresses on international aviation, even as increased vaccination rates and testing protocols make air travel possible again. Uh, his message is online. And tomorrow, the Secretary General will participate in an event organized by the UN Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. And that is their high-level pledging event for the Central Emergency Response Fund. The event, which marks the SURF's 15th anniversary, seeks to galvanize greater financial commitment to ensure that the fund remains fit to respond to the increasing level of complexities of global humanitarian needs. Established in 2006, the SURF has allocated more than $7.5 billion to provide assistance for millions of people in more than 110 countries and territories. Since the fund was established, global funding needs through humanitarian appeals have increased more than sevenfold, from 5.2 in 2006 to 32, uh, 32 million people uh, to $41 billion in 2022 to help 183 million people in need. Uh, I see Filippo is on the screen, so we'll take a few questions and then we will turn to Filippo. Yes, Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. Is there any update on um, aid deliveries um, into Tigray and the possibility of any fuel trucks getting in? No. Uh, no updates. Uh, we're trying to get some more information from our colleagues on the ground, but if fuel trucks had gone in, I think we would have been, uh, uh, we, we would have been told. Um, and does, does the Secretary General have any comment on this terrible prison fire in Burundi that's killed at least 40 people and prisoners who were shouting to be let out as the flames erupted? Well, we, I think we were all sh uh, shocked to see the, the, this fire, and I think it is, it is important that there is a full investigation into the circumstances of what happened. Benno. Uh, thank you. So in France, one of the alleged killers of uh, journalist uh, Jamal Khashoggi was um, arrested today. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what's the opinion of the Secretary General? How important is it that at least one of the perpetrators has to endure um, credible legal steps as well, I mean, this didn't happen? Right, so I mean, far? there's, from what I've seen, there's a judicial process going on. We've always said from the beginning there needed to be accountability uh, for the murder of Mr. Kosoji. Uh, um, Alan, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Stefan. Uh, the negotiations between Presidents Putin and Biden have just concluded. I remember your comment yesterday, but uh, what outcome do you expect? Let, let me see. I, I haven't seen the outcome, so let's we'll take a look at it, and I'll get back to you. Uh, Pam, and then we'll go. Uh, Steph, um, just a follow-up on AD's question on Tigray. The last comment, maybe not the last, but one of the comments you made is that fuel, some trucks were getting in, but fuel was not and that 5.2 million um, in Tigray um, it did not have access to livelihood and limited access to markets. That was about right. four days ago. Do you have any um, more information about fuel or? No, no, we have, we, have, uh, we have not been advised, I have not been advised that any of our fuel trucks have gotten in. We understand that there, our, Team on the ground has been able to access some fuel, dealing with the local authorities, and, and, and but we do not have the fuel that we need uh, to operate a, a and to operate our operations and to to meet even start to meet the needs of those who need help. Because one of the points I wanted to make is the lack of fuel not only hampers our food distribution, but it hampers our ability to go out and assess the situation. So there are a lot of there are a lot of places we have not been able to to visit. If to some, and then sorry. Uh, <clears throat> Steph, uh, today the um, uh, High Commissioner for uh, Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, said in, a, in the briefing she gave on the situation of human rights in the occupied Palestinian territories that all of her international staff uh, did not get uh, their visas uh, renewed. To go where, to where? Sorry? All the international staff in the occupied Palestinian territories did not get their visas renewed let, by let Israel, me, and me, she said me, 16 of them. Let, let me let me check. I have not heard of it, but let me check. I'll okay. get back to you. So that was my question. Why didn't we hear okay. about that from uh, you? Because I, I have, you're, you're not the only one who doesn't hear about things. Uh, Arul, yes, please. And then Abdul Hamid, then we'll go to um, Filippo. The UN has warned about a dire food security situation in Afghanistan. India has offered uh, medical supplies as well as 50,000 tons of wheat to Afghanistan. They've been held up by Pakistan uh, with various kinds of conditionalities. Any reaction to that? And also, is the UN involved in resolving this situation and perhaps uh, arranging for the supplies to reach Afghanistan? Let, let me check with our humanitarian colleagues. We would want to see, obviously, humanitarian aid to be uh, to arrive where it needs, anywhere around the world, as swiftly as possible. Abdel Hamid, and then we'll go to the High Commission. Questions are practically brief. The first question, uh, Israeli ambassador to the UN uh, sent a letter to the Secretary General protesting that the UN differentiates between Israeli civilians and Israeli settlers. What is the UN position? Do they see the same? Did they put them in the same basket, Israeli civilians and Israeli settlers? That's my first question. And the second, on Saturday, two Israeli soldiers executed at a point blank the young man, a Palestinian uh, young man, Mohammed Salima, in, in the front of Damascus Gate. Uh, the two soldiers were arrested uh, briefly for a few hours, and they let go. Are you aware of this uh, crime against humanity by killing a wounded civilians no, lying on the ground, executed by two soldiers? What is the UN position on that? Uh, Abdel Hamid, I have not heard about the second case. On the first one, uh, I would, I will send you the transcript from yesterday because I actually read out a quite long answer. Ibtissam had the uh, answered the, I think asked the question, but I will send you exactly what I said yesterday, which answers your question. So um, I know there's some more questions. I'll try to come back to the rest of you, uh, but I, I know Filippo, uh, High Commissioner, has a limited amount of time. So Filippo, you go ahead. Uh, make some opening remarks. We'll take some questions, and then if there are more questions for me afterwards, I'll come back to it. Filippo, please. You have.